Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and the time is nigh for Mighty Number no. 9. Everybody is excited. They want to see this super awesome Mega Man pizza explosion diarrhea bombshell of a game. <laughs> Oh, and the reviews are so sweet to look at, man. I mean, wow. Cynical gamers will really enjoy reading about this game and the ultimate shitstorm that it became. Um, it, it's, it, it, it's finally over with, guys. Uh, Mighty Number no. 9 will be on store shelves tomorrow. Reviews are out. Let's Plays are out. And it's not looking too good. <laughs> it's more like Mighty Number no. 6 out of 10, because <laughs> that's how the reviews look on Kickstarter. So, how do we get to this mess? It's a really interesting story, because this game has been in development for, as far as we know, at least three years. Possibly even longer, if we look at the Kickstarter data. And consider like conceptualization and you know that kind of stuff as part of the development process which I technically would so it's probably closer to four years that this game was actually in some kind of development and this was made by a Mega Man legend Keiji Inafune who made almost every Mega Man game that we can think of a franchise that basically invented the concept of annualized releases long before Madden or Call of Duty was even a thing. Uh, it, it's just it's just crazy. It really is. I really don't know what to say about this situation. You know, this is just... I'm just flabbergasted that this game apparently is only okay. Uh, and that depends on your definition of okay, because some people might say that a 62 on Metacritic is not okay. Uh, especially for a game that's been in development for this long and it's been this hyped. It's really going to put a stain on Kickstarter games, for sure. It's going to make people a lot more skeptical about backing games. I mean, imagine if Bloodstained Ritual of the Night ends up the same way, which hopefully it doesn't, and it honestly looks a lot better. So I'm sure that we'll probably have some success there, but you never know. What if uh, these companies are just using our nostalgia, our love for old-school games as a crutch to basically get themselves a bunch of money that they honestly didn't earn. We have to think about the history of Compcept, uh, what this company has done. Now, they haven't worked only on Mighty Number no. 9, they have worked on a few other games as well. Uh, but it's all been like co-development stuff. Stuff for games like uh, Soul Sacrifice and uh, Yaiba and Ninja Gaiden Z, that's a couple I can think of right off the top of my head. You know, uh, there's some other stuff, of course. They're also co-developing ReCore, which is coming out supposedly this September on Xbox One. And, uh, you know, but this is like their only game that they've had so far that has been exclusively them making it. Well, not even the case, because there's also another company called Enti Creates that was a co-developer of this one. But I guess Comcept was the main developer. Is uh, So this is their first main development game, and it hasn't looked too good. Uh, $3,845,170 backed via Kickstarter from 67,226 backers. One of the largest Kickstarter campaigns of all time for a video game. As a matter of fact, some people might argue that Mighty Number no. 9 is the one that really kickstarted Kickstarter for games. Although, I would go further back and say something like uh, Wasteland 2 or Double Fine Adventure or something like that, you know since those games are, I think, predated Mighty Number no. 9 by a year, actually. But I guess it seemed like this game really helped get it a lot of attention to Kickstarter, as well as the Ouya and all that good stuff. And I'm kind of going into a rambling tangent. So where am I going with this? Well, why was the game delayed for so much and just be okay? What's the point in that? If you're going to willingly crap out a game that's just okay... Why did we have to wait for it? You know, what was up with the delays constantly? I mean, let's just look at the estimated delivery date of the Kickstarter if we can. Let's see, I'll have to go to the reward page, I think, here. Um, I guess I have to go to campaign. 
Yeah, estimated delivery of this game was December 2013. <laughs> December 2013. So this game is technically late by two and a half years. And it still sucks. <laughs> Let's compare this with another Kickstarter game. Okay. I don't know if you guys notice this. You might actually see the hint on the screen. This game had an estimated delivery of September 2013, and unfortunately it didn't make that goal. But it was only about nine months late, not two and a half years late. And it won multiple Game of the Year awards. It was made by a unheard of and unknown game studio that I would assume is even smaller than Concept. And from what I understand, has never worked on a game before, at least together. Um, as that company. I'm sure that people in the company probably have some ex industry experience. And it only raised $311,000. Shovel Knight. And it came out in June of 2014. Two years before Mighty Number no. 9. And apparently this game is a lot more polished and just a lot better throwback to the classic games. Shovel Knight, bitches. Mighty Number no. 9. <laughs> You know, it honestly makes sense because of who is publishing the game, Deep Silver. Um, I don't think a lot of people know about Deep Silver. They're probably the worst game publisher that's out there right now. They're a company that... Uh, okay, think of it this way. You have uh, some companies like Activision, which I've shit on in the past. And Activision does put out a lot of shitty games, but... At least for a few titles, at least for a couple of Activision's developers, they have some kind of penchant for quality. I know some people will be like, oh, well, even Call of Duty and Skylander sucks and all that, but let's be honest, objectively, they're good games. And, um, you know, so Activision does put out at least an occasional good game. Uh, Deep Silver, the only game that they put out that's even remotely good, that's by one of their own developers, is the Saints Row games. And that's not even their franchise. They bought the franchise for pennies on the dollar from the THQ meltdown. I don't know how this company has gotten to be so large and advanced so quickly in the game industry when look at these Metacritic scores that their games often get. It's, it's just crazy. I mean, there's some other shit to, uh, publishers out there, but at least they don't pretend that they're like a top dog publisher. You know, they know their place in the game industry, and that's cool, you know, we can respect that, but Deep Silver is just a trash publisher, and honestly, the perfect publisher to have for Mighty Number no. 9. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little rant and tirade that we went on about. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the description for more ways to support the show. But till then, Down Phoenix out. <laughs>